Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I have two topics that I want to discuss with you. And the first one is a look back at last week's video. And then second, we'll take a look at the continuing problem with the PSXX circuit breaker. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and get started, and I'm hoping to keep this video fairly short. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is some feedback from last week's video, because I got a lot of comments from you guys, and I appreciate that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the feedback on last week's video. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have uh, started out the video explaining that my focus was mainly on uh, mistakes that people could make who were really interested in creating the type of model railroad that you see in the pages of Model Railroader and Railroad Model Craftsman and other magazines every month. For those of you who are interested in doing that, then I think a lot of the costly mistakes that I pointed out are very important and appropriate. For those of you who aren't interested in proceeding down that path, then, you know, whatever you want to do is fine. I wasn't criticizing any of, that, any of that, but I will suggest that, you know, even if you like learning from your mistakes, mistakes can be costly, and it's something that, if at all possible, you should try to avoid them, because it can actually wear you down and get you tired of developing a model railroad. Okay, so that's all I've got to say on that, and let's go ahead and move forward and talk about the PSXX. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the PSXX. And if you remember, a few weeks ago, I did a video on the, the PSXX. After one of the viewers here reported having problems with his repeatedly shutting down over and over again. After about a week or so of back and forth with him, I thought that we had gotten the issue straightened out, and he seemed to be on a nice straight path as far as operating his model railroad. However, since then I've been getting more comments and more feedback from viewers. So I got on the phone, called Larry Meyer at uh, DCC Specialties, who designs these things, and I asked him, you know, what's going on, Larry? I'm still getting feedback on this. And Larry's comment was they had just finished looking into this problem in depth and he had an answer. And what it turned out was primarily a feature in DCC called Railcom. And Railcom, to remind you, is a feature that allows your command station to talk to your decoders and get information back from them. Right now, the main thing that you can do with it is read back CV settings when you're using programming on the main. Now, the problem that crept in here was Railcom is very new and very different as far as the way it works. In order for Railcom, in order for the command station to use Railcom to talk to a decoder and get information back from it, uh, it the command station has to turn track power off. So it turns track power off and then it stays off for about 450 microseconds. So a very short amount of time. And then power comes back on again. And then it waits a little bit and it turns it back off and does another read, turns it back on. And that keeps going on and on. And the frequency at which it does that seems to be proportional to the number of locomotives that are in use on the railroad. So the more you're running, the more frequent it's going to be, and the more of these on-off cycles you're going to get. Now, unfortunately, one thing that happens is that every time the command station cuts power back on, you get a current surge. And the testing that Larry did on this, he was getting spikes that could run anywhere four, five, six amps. Now, given that the PSXX has a default trip current limit of two amps, you're gonna get a lot that exceed that two amp value because of that. And unfortunately, there was an unintended consequence of the new features in the PSXX. Now, it has two current overcurrent detection circuits. It has the main uh, overcurrent detection circuit that will kick out at the preset limit that you give it. So if you set it for four amps, it's going to shut off, come back on and look and see if that short is still there. And then if it is, it's gonna cut off and that's it. 
and then it'll wait a while and come back on again, depending on the delay. Now, the other thing that's built into the PSXX that's different is it has a current limiting circuit. Now, what that circuit does is it will prevent and limit the maximum current of any surges that occur on the track. So if you've got a whole series of these on-off uh, se sequences due to Railcom and you're busting the limit at four or five or six amps, then that circuit is keeping track of the number of those. And when it gets to a certain point, then it says, okay, we've got a short circuit here. And it passes that on to that primary short circuit algorithm in the processor. And that one then decides whether or not it's a real short and it will shut off. Okay, so that's the sequence of events. And the problem in almost all the cases that Larry ran into was people with command stations that support Railcom. So Railcom was active on the layout. It was causing all these little on-off surges to occur. And it was kicking out the uh, detection limit on the PSXX. So that was the problem. Uh, in addition, he found one other oddball one, and that is very dirty track can cause similar problems. Because as a locomotive rolls along, you're going to have these little blips occurring due to the fact that you're getting power to the decoder and then it's cut out as it rolls across dirt and then it comes back on. And that causes little current surges as well that the PSXX can pick up and can cause problems. He found one layout where that was the issue. They told him to clean the track and that fixed it. But for the rest of them, they were primarily ESU ecosystems or similar systems that have Railcom on them. And that could be the ECOS, it could be the PICO that's similar, it could be the DigiKize system, it could be one of the new TCS systems. If you're having uh, shutdowns with your PSXX that you can't account for for any other reason, the first thing that you should do is try turning Railcom off in your command station. And there should be some sort of a, of a, of a setting in the, in the command station software that allows you to turn Railcom off. So get your manual out and look that up. And then if it continues after that, then clean your track. If it still continues, then call the support people at Tony's Trains. So now what Larry has done is, in this new version of the software for the PSX, and that's revision G as in George, what he has done is he has included a new CV, CV57. And that uh, allows you to turn off the circuit within the PSXX that monitors all of these and looks for all of these little shorts that can occur due to Railcom and, and similar things. So instead of monitoring all of those overcurrent uh, blips that occur due to Railcom or dirty track or whatever on your layout, the PSXX will basically ignore those. It will then go ahead, stop keeping track of those, stop counting them, and default to the basic short circuit protection that has always been built into the PSX and PSXX series of circuit breakers. So give that a try, and uh, hopefully that will work out for you with your PSXX circuit breaker. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope I haven't scared anyone away from purchasing the PSXX circuit breaker because it still is one of the best ones available on the market. So keep in mind that the new versions that should be shipping in the next week or so will have that new software on it that allows you to turn off that current monitoring feature that was interacting with Railcom and causing the inadvertent shutdowns. So it's something that will be available to you from here on out if you have PSXX units of your own already and you want to use Railcom or you're having other problems, contact the support people at Tony's Trains and see if they have other suggestions or arrange to get that uh, software upgrade done on your units. In the meantime, have a great week, have a great weekend, and hopefully I'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.